क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर इन रिप्रोडक्शन इन प्लांट्स फर्स्ट इज फिल इन द ब्लैंक्स सो प्रोडक्शन ऑफ न्यू इंडिविजुअल्स फ्रॉम द वेजिटेटिव पार्ट ऑफ पेरेंट इज कॉल्ड वेजिटेटिव प्रोडक्शन अ फ्लावर मे हैव आई मेल और फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव पार्ट सच अ फ्लावर इज कॉल्ड यूनिसेक्शुअल फ्लावर the transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of the same or of another flower of the same kind is known as pollination the fusion of male and female gametes is termed as fertilization seed dispersal takes place by means of wind water and animal wind water and animal Describe different methods of asexual reproduction. Give example. Asexual reproduction means you don't require the male or female part. Either male can do it or female can do it individually. In terms of plants, so there are different methods. First is vegetative propagation. This is a type of asexual reproduction in which the new plants are from are made or produced from. the buds as you can see here the roots or stems so the roots and stems as you see here this is a node here we have bud the axil in case of case of a potato plant this sprout from an eye this is an eye of that potato and here this is a ginger a ginger this is a new plant this is a new plant sprouting from itself then budding organisms like hydra if you see hydra a bud will develop as an outgrowth at say some specific point or site now these buds they develop into tiny individuals like this and then they feel fully fully uh, mature and after that they detach themselves from the parent body and now this is a full individual independent like the previous one fragmentation so when water and nutrients they are available like say algae the algae grow and multiply rapidly and it breaks up into two or more fragments and these fragments or pieces they grow into new individuals i'll show you how this is a part and this is the sub part so when it is like this it disintegrates or make itself two parts again it makes multiple part like hierarchical multiplying so this is the fragmentation in algae which is also known as spirogyra Here is an example of uh, spore formation. So the spores are asexual reproductive bodies. Each spore spore is covered by a hard protective coat. Why? Because there can be high temperature, low humidity. These are unfavorable conditions, climatic condition, weather condition. That is why, because of this hard protective coat, they can survive for a long time. And if the conditions are now favorable the spore will germinate and develop a new individual so this is a spore gm hypha these are spores so this is the reproduction through spore formation in fungus explain what do you understand by sexual reproduction in sexual reproduction the male and female part both are required so when two parents they both are involved in reproduction the method is known as sexual reproduction the male and female gametes they fuse together during fertilization in order to produce the zygote then this zygote will further develop into an embryo which will further make itself as a new individual state the difference main difference between asexual and sexual reproduction first of all in asexual reproduction only one parent is needed in sexual parent or sexual reproduction two parents both male 
and female are required. The offspring in the case of asexual is exactly similar and normally you can say similar to parent but in a in sexual production the offsprings may have some variation with respect to the parent involved the example of asexual reproduction yeast hydra spirogyra and sexual reproduction we have animals human insects they show sexual reproduction sketch the reproductive parts of a flower so the main main basic thing is this one see this is a ovule which contains the ovary and this ovary along with this style along with this stigma makes a carpel if you take this 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 one is antha this one is a filament and they both are called as or they are termed as stamen these are petals these are sepal so these are the reproductive parts these basically these and these are the reproductory parts of a flower so the pollen will go here it will combine with the ovary and then germinate explain the difference between self pollination and cross pollination self means no, no other is required cross means one to other so self pollination the pollen grains in both the case the pollen grains are transferred in self pollination pollen grains are transferred to stigma of same flower this is very important same flower but pollen grains in case of cross pollination they are transferred to stigma of different flower in self pollination the pollinating agent is not required but in cross pollination we do require so i'll cut this knot pollinating agent like the wind the water the insects they are required the example of self pollination are peanuts sunflower the example of cross pollination mango rose and most of the plants which flower so flowering plants how does the process of fertilization take place in flowers so this is what happens once the pollen grain spreads on the stigma so this is pollen grain it spreads into this stigma this is the stigma this whole is stigma it produces a means it produces a pollen tube so this is a pollen tube this whole is a pollen tube now this process is called the germination of pollen grain now this pollen tube penetrates this style and reaches this style and reaches the ovary this is the ovary which is the ovary now male nucleus is transferred through this pollen tube this pollen tube this is the transferring agent then here the fusion of male and female nuclei takes place inside this ovary and this is called fertilization describe the various ways by which seeds are dispersed there are various methods first by wind water animals and others will discuss so the dispersal by wind the seeds are generally lightweight they may be hair like they may be wing like these are structures which are present in on them so they are very microscopic they can float on air and that is why they are dispersed by wind for example dandelion maple drumstick how they are dispersed by water especially we are talking about aquatic plants and those plants which grow near the water body so seeds of water lily for example float and that is why they are dispersed by water if you talk about coconut the coconut seed has a very tough fibrous covering and it has what air inside that is why it, it floats it floats on water dispersal by animal some seeds uh, may have spine like structure and the animal furs are the best you can say carrier on which they get stuck and they can be dispersed or spread to different places 
like beggar, tick, and xanthium. But some weed seeds are swallowed by birds and animals along with fruits. And then when they do excreta or the droppings, their birds and animal droppings, they come out with this and that is how they are, they are dispersed. Dispersal by bursting. There are certain fruits, when they open, they burst as they mature. And this force of bursting, because it burst and there is a force, this will spread the seeds. It happens in ladyfinger, castor, balsam. Humans are also involved, especially during farming. So human beings, they also help in dispersal of seeds. We need to match this. So bud will match with yeast, eyes with potato, fragmentation with pyrogyra, wings with maple, and spores with bread mold. We'll take the correct answer. The reproductive part of a plant is, is it a flower? The process of fusion of the male and female gametes is called, is it fertilization or pollination? Mature ovary forms, is it fruit? The spore producing plant is, is it a bread mold or potato? Let's see. Biophyllum can reproduce by its, is it leaves? Let us see the answers. The reproductive part of the plant is flower. The process of fusion of male and female gametes, fertilization. Mature ovary forms fruit. Spore producing element, uh, plant is bread mold. And biophyllum can produce or reproduce by its leaves. So these were questions.